Welcome to this video series, everybody. My name is Katja. I'm IoT Specialist Solutions Architect here with AWS. Joined the company 2019 and switched over to IoT Specialist in January 2022. I actually had the pleasure to work with a lot of our customers on their cold use cases and how to build them up from edge to cloud and how to uh, transmit the data to the backend. One of the services that I speak about quite a lot is AWS IoT Fleetwise. So I thought let's do a little series about the basics. We're starting with the introduction. So today we want to talk about the use cases, the challenges and how AWS IoT Fleetwise can be leveraged within your backend application as well as on the device itself to uh, tackle those use cases today. About the second part, when we're diving deeper into the actual architecture of AWS IoT Fleetwise itself and the components that make up the service. In the third part, we're going to be using CLI commands and you're invited to follow me do those in your own AWS account to build up the service and collect the data from the device and store it in the TimeStream database. Let's get started. Before we actually talk about the service, let's talk about the challenges first. First of those challenges would be the data variety. So just imagine you're at home in your house and you look out into the street. There might be a lot of different vehicle models that you see. For example, an electric vehicle might be sending different data sets than a typical diesel vehicle model. You designing the backend application also need to have a collection system in place that allows you to collect and store that different kinds of data sets that you're receiving and have to be prepped for each and every one of them. Second challenge is the data volume. So if we're thinking about 2030, so far, far in the future, and we're talking about level three plus vehicle models, the estimation is that those will generate more than 10 terabytes of data in a single hour. Those volumes make it very, very complex to gather, but second of all, transmit, that's also a cost factor to keep in mind, and third of all, make use of the data that you have in the backend application. So how to sort through those massive amounts of data that you're storing each hour and each day. The third challenge are timelines. Even if you have a system in place to gather all that data, the issue that might be coming up is that you might not be able to gather real time insights and that fleet wide. So fleet wide problems could be the case that you're not able to analyze them or figure out these problems in real time, which prevents you from doing something like preventive maintenance. And the last is data silos. So we're not only talking about the data that you're collecting, but also about how that data is actually encoded within the vehicle, which very much depends on the system in place and how that data can be read and how we can convert it into a human readable form. So that's also something that not everybody interested in vehicle data from your company is aware of. So that knowledge about the data formats and schemas are actually locked in organizational silos. We're moving forward to the big data loop. So we're going to see how Fleetwise can actually be used in a full system like this to bring benefit. This is still very abstract but we're getting deeper into it step by step. Let's start. So in the left bottom, you'll see the vehicle itself. We have three examples for ECUs here, which is the radar, the brakes and the engine. And then we are having those communicating over the CAN bus, leveraging OBD2. 
On top, we have the vehicle abstraction layer, which would be the element where Fleetwise brings the most benefit, which allows you to understand and then communicate over the information that is observed basically on the canvas. We're sending those data sets over to AWS IoT, which then forwards them to the downstream applications. In this case, we're interested in analytics, machine learning, and insights. We have example services here, so this should not be limiting in any way. We have QuickSight, we have SageMaker, we have Glue for the ETL pipeline, as well as Grafana. As I said, just a few examples. And then those applications may actually lead to you realizing that you don't have the correct data that you actually need or not enough data. So this is when you change the collection process on the vehicle or want to change the collection process on the vehicle. And you send that over as a command to, in this case, first AWS IoT, which sends it back to the vehicle abstraction layer to collect different data sets. And this is what Fleetwise makes simple for you. And we're just going to dive now a little bit into the service itself. And then, as I said in the next video, that's where we're going to actually see the components that make this actually happen. So let's see what AWS IoT Fleetwise actually helps you with. First of all, we're unlocking the easy access to vehicle data. We talked about the knowledge about the data formats being locked in organizational silos. And through using the vehicle signal specification, so VSS, we actually have this uniform way of describing the whole heterogeneous fleet, which then democratizes the access to the vehicle data across the whole organization. Second would be also one of the challenges, um, reducing data volumes for cloud ingestion. So with Fleetwise, you can define so-called campaigns, but let's not dive into the technical side of things too quick. But these campaigns give you the option to either time-based or condition-based gather your data. And third would be the making the vehicle data actionable in real time. So gathering the right signals from a selected amount of vehicles in real time then time-based, condition-based gives you to the option to in real time react to the data. What would this look like when we look at the life cycle of a problem with AWS IoT Fleetwise? So this is one problem we can look at to just make this perhaps a little more relatable. First of all, we have the battery overheating. So an event is triggered because of that. And then we want to, or we have an alarm that is set by the OEM and this one is triggered. With Fleetwise, the OEM quality group actually has the possibility to deploy a high sampling data collection campaign for specific vehicles or the entire fleet. Based on the report, um, and then also a deep dive on the data collection, you can find out the root cause. And as you see pretty quickly within five to 10 days, this will lead or could lead to an OTA to fix the problem. So this is the end of the video. As I said, this is part one of the three video series. So I hope and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you so much.